Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Let me know if you guys can hear me. So awesome. We have a lot of people from the nations. We have Brazil, we have England, we have Australia, we have Germany. So cool. That's so awesome. So excited to be sharing with you guys today on um, just really practical stuff on hearing God and on prophesying. Um, again, real quick, I just want to uh, quickly honor Kyle and Cayenne Wolfgang. Um, they've been such awesome friends to me. And uh, when I first met them, I didn't know um, who they were. I didn't know they had such a big social media following. I just thought they were really cool people um, that had really pure hearts for Jesus. And so, you know, I, I, I thank God for them and, and their hearts for Jesus. Um, I know a lot of you um, were doing the Proverbs 31 day challenge um, where I got to share twice on Proverbs 7 and then on Proverbs 19. And the reason why I'm doing this teaching today is because I had lots of you kind of either DM me individually or reach out um, asking questions about prophecy and kind of like, how does it work? And and I've, I know a lot of you might come from um, different biblical backgrounds. Um, and so today my heart is just to give you a um, very kind of beginner foundational knowledge on prophecy. Um, I know we can go deeper into this on a lot of different levels, but um, I'm going to just do something more foundational um, for those of you that, that are kind of maybe just um, just getting to, to know, you know, what prophecy is for the first time. And so um, that's kind of what I'm going to go over today. I'm going to go over a couple of things um, in the scripture. And then I'm going to also go over like practical um, foundations for like, and even things that I do practically in my process with hearing God um, and, and in my process in growing in the prophetic and so I'm so excited. It looks like a lot of you guys are starting to um, to log in. And so, and it looks like you guys are from all different types of places. And at the end of this time, um, I'll definitely, I might call out a couple of words of knowledge or I might call out a couple of people that are commenting here um, and pray over you guys and, and just kind of, um, I, I want to bring activation to what we're doing and also give you guys some practical application for how you guys can practice um, prophecy in your lives. Um, and so I think to start off, you know, it's important to know that like the foundational truth that God loves to talk to his children, you know, all through the Old Testament, all the way through to the New Testament, God's always been speaking to his children, um, whether this was from like the prophets, you know, establishing, you know, Jesus is coming um, up to the New Testament of God pouring out his spirit. You know, God's always loved to talk to his children. And just because now that the Bible is completed, it doesn't mean that God just decided to stop talking. God still wants to talk to his children. And I think prophecy is a way that we can translate the heart of God both to believers and also to unbelievers. Um, real quick in my journey, um, you know, when, when I first got saved and I was right off of a um, couple days off of drugs, you know, I, I didn't know too much about this Jesus thing. And, you know, I, I knew that Jesus was real. And uh, about three days after, I had a pastor from my church, um, Dr. Michael Maiden, and he, he came to my church or he came to the, the center that I was doing a program at. And I remember he called out um, a specific word of knowledge and he ended up praying for me. And when he prayed for me, you know, he knew extensive things about my past, my present, um, and then lots of cool things that I didn't know about myself yet in my future. Um, now it's been eight years since then. And I've seen a lot of those things have now come to pass. Um, and so it was so wonderful in that moment that when he prayed that thing over me, it made me feel and know like that God sees me and that God loves me and that God has a plan for me and not just his plan for the whole world, but that he has a plan that's so personal, 
that's so intimate, that's so intricate. And, and so, you know, the, the gift of prophecy so blessed me in that moment because I realized like, wow, God doesn't just love me, but he's intricately involved in the smallest details of my life. And there was things that this man said that I hadn't even told my parents. There's things that this man said that, that I had, honestly, I think I was probably the only person that, that knew these things. And so he, the, the secrets of my heart were revealed. And in that moment, you know, I was like, I know that God is real, but not just that I know that God is real. I know that God is intimately involved with me and that God is intimately involved in, in, in that he cares about the details of my life, the details of my future. And, and you know, that, that may put such a passion inside of me to respond to the Lord. It's put such a passion inside of me to pursue diligently the Lord because I, I because, you know, being encountered like that was so special. And so I said to myself, you know, I one day want to be able to bless somebody the same way that this person blessed me. Um, Lord, you know, it, it's such a, it was such a deep desire for me to bless someone else in that same way um, because I saw how that one encounter and that one moment, it shifted the whole trajectory of my whole life. And so in that one moment, my, ho my whole trajectory took a turn. And so the, the prophetic word did not just, um, it, it didn't just tell me what was to come, but it also started to push me into what was coming. So it, it not just brought revelation and insight, but it also brought a forth telling, a pushing out and acceleration into those things. Um, and so, you know, prophecy does, you know, it foretells the future, but it also um, pushes forth. And these, you know, the, the words that are spoken actually have creative power as well. Um, and so it was so powerful, you know, for me to experience this. And so I, I want to give you guys a, you know, the most elementary definition of what prophecy is. And, you know, prophecy in the most elementary definition would be this. It's a divine spoken word that comes to us by revelation. And so this is when God's plan and God's heart are revealed for a person, a place, or a situation. And so, you know, in, in biblical times, you know, kings would ask prophets, you know, should I go to this war? Um, should I fight these people? And the Lord might speak to them. Yes, you should fight these people. I've given you the land, you know, or the, or the Lord might warn them. Um, and so prophecy and prophets were used in many different ways in biblical times, you know, to where the Lord spoke to his people or the Lord spoke to Israel. There was many different prophets that spoke to Israel, you know, concerning the future of Israel, concerning that God had a hope and a future for Israel when Israel was in captivity, just like the prophet Jeremiah said. And so, you know, um, a lot of people say that, you know, because the Bible is completed, that prophecy is not for today. You know, and, and a lot of people use this Bible verse that, you know, when the perfect comes, you know, the imperfect will pass away. But, you know, I believe this perfect that the Lord's talking about in that scripture is when God's perfect plans and purposes have all come to pass. And I don't think we've reached that moment yet. You know, I, I believe that we are we're in a moment that that God still is speaking to his church. Now, now God's what God speaks doesn't it, it's never going to contradict what's in the written word. Um, and, and it cannot contradict what's in the written word. God will not speak against his nature, but um, God's written word is also, you know, th that's a guideline for the way that he speaks today but it's not the only way that he's speaking now. And so um, I, I want to start with the foundation. Speak in the tongues of men and angels, but I have not love. I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And if I give away all I have and deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. And so, you know, the, I think it's important, you know, Paul is addressing the church of Corinth 
And he's saying, you know, if I speak in tongues, if I have prophetic knowledge, you know, but I don't have love, I gain nothing. And, and I believe he was speaking this, you know, as a, um, he was speaking this as a correction to the church of Corinth because they were, you know, they, they were functioning so much in the gifts of the spirit. They were functioning so much in speaking in tongues and in prophecy. And, and Paul was saying, yeah, that's cool that you do that. But what's most important is that you love. And, you know, in, in that, in, in the rest of that chapter, it talks about what love looks like, such as love is patient. Love is kind. Um, it is not, you know, self-pleasing and, and you can read the rest of that. Uh, chapter for for the um, rest of the definition of God's definition of love, but I think the the foundation of prophesying is always going to be love. It's not accuracy, but it's love. I know Old Testament prophecy was based off of you know accuracy, but in New Testament prophecy is based off of love. And so you know I've had multiple encounters where I I missed a word of knowledge for someone and it wasn't correct. But I, you know, in that encounter, I still love the person. And in that encounter, they still met the heart of Jesus. And I think most importantly, more than getting it right, is that you display the character in the heart of Jesus when you are prophesying. And um, I know someone had asked a, a question, does everyone have the gift of prophecy? I'm going to get to that right now. And so, you know, people are going to say, who is it for? Right. And so he here's what I'll say. And I'm going to break this down kind of real briefly. A lot of people have questions of like, well, is prophecy just for like special people? Like who's it for? Right. Um, and thanks for asking that question. Um, you know, it says in Acts 2 verse 17 to 18, and this was this, this prophecy was fulfilled, you know, in, in Acts when the spirit was poured out, um, you know, when they prayed in the upper room. And it says this, and in the last days, it shall be God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And, and so it says this, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on who? All flesh. And so it prophecy, this is, a, a, again, someone asked what verse, this is Acts 2, verse 17 to 18. Um, and, uh, and prophecy is for every single believer. I'm not saying that every believer is a prophet. So there's a difference between prophesying, moving in the gift of prophecy, and then being in the office of the prophet. Um, and Ephesians talks about like the different offices you know, such as apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, and shepherd that Christ gave um, as gifts to build up his church. With those, those are callings and, and those are callings from the Lord. Um, you can't ever work your way into it or become it. But but prophesying and the gift of prophecy, this is for everyone. And this is something that that you can totally have. And it's not something just for special people um, that, that are really, really close with the Lord. Um, but this is something that all of you who are watching um, can function in. All of you that are watching can, uh, can, can you can really release God's heart in this way. And, and I'm going to give some kind of practical teaching on kind of how we prophesy and give a little bit of biblical foundation. Um, but, but I think it's really cool in this verse, you know, it says that in the last days we're going to, young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. And so if you think about who are visionaries and dreamers, if we think about this day and age, you know, I believe that God wants to speak to us because visionaries and dreamers might look like innovators and creatives and entrepreneurs. Um, and, and for that, and for us to download God's heart and mind and release that into society, we have to hear his voice. And so I want to give some kind of practical steps on how to hear his voice. I want to talk about hindrances on, on, you know, things that maybe keep you from hearing his voice. Um, and then when we hear his voice, what are the ways that his voice, um, what are ways that we hear his voice? So I'm going to go over all of these different things. Um, 
And so in, uh, in first Corinthians, uh, 14, and I just want to encourage all of you for the sake of time, I'm not going to read like full chapters of scripture. Um, but for, for your own benefit, I would encourage you to read first Corinthians 13 and first Corinthians 14, um, completely. And that will give a good, um, foundation for, you know, the things that I'm talking about today. Um, I'm not, I probably won't have as much time to talk about, um, you know, I, I, I might not have enough time to, to talk about, um, tongues and interpretation of tongues and, and all of that. Um, but, um, I'm going to briefly touch on it. And so in first Corinthians 14, verse one to five, it says this pursue love, Again, it's telling us to pursue love, you know, as the highest pursuit and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God. For no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the spirit. On the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding, encouragement, and consolation. The one who speaks in a tongue builds himself up but the one who prophesies builds up the church. Now we all want you to, now I want you all to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets so that the church may be built up. And so I, I, I want to start um, at the top here. It says to pursue love, but it also says this earnestly desire these spiritual gifts. And so I would say the beginning of wanting to pursue prophecy is having earnest desire. Um, it's having hunger. You know, my pastor at church for the nations, pastor Mike says this, if you can live without it, you will live without it. And so it has to be something in your heart that you decide, you know, I'm not willing to live without this God. I must hear your voice. And you know, it's something. Um, so I think that hunger is the first step and having that hunger is the first step for prophecy. And, you know, it, it says, I, I love how it talks about love still being the highest goal and that Paul keeps this kind of at the top that like, you know, prophecy isn't my number one pursuit, but love is my number one pursuit. Jesus is my number one pursuit. And prophecy is a way that I get to translate the heart of Jesus to another person. Because, you know, in layman's terms, you know, what prophecy is, is it's someone else getting to experience the relationship that you have with the father, the intimacy that you have with God. And so it's God speaking to you and then you translating your relationship with them. And so many times, you know, I've been able to prophesy over someone that does not know Jesus and speak some things into them. And because of that, they came to know Jesus and they came to know Jesus because they experienced my connection with the Lord and they experienced my intimacy with the Lord. And they, they decided, man, I want to have that too. I want to have that connection with the Lord. I want to, to know the Lord and, and I, I want to be spoken into with love like this. And, you know, in this scripture too, you know, it also talks about what the goal of prophecy is. And so I'm going to, I'm going to say this again. It says the one who prophesies speaks to people for their, it's three different things. Number one, upbuilding, number two, encouragement, and number three, consolation. And so these are the goals of prophecy is when I prophesy, I speak to people for, it says in this verse, upbuilding, encouragement, and consolation. And so my goal should always be to upbuild to encourage, to give comfort. Um, these, th th this is what Paul's saying. You know, when you prophesy, this is where, where you, you aim your prophecy, you know, towards others it is to upbuild them, to encourage them, to bring them comfort, you know, and, and it also, it, it does briefly talk about tongues in the scripture. And this is talking about tongues, which is a prayer language. And it's saying, when you speak in tongues, you are encouraging yourself. But if I'm just speaking in tongues a bunch and the other person can't understand it. It's only building me up and it's not building them up. But prophecy isn't just for building me up. It's for building you up. And so prophecy builds up the church. 
tongues builds up you. And so when you speak in tongues, you build up your spirit. And, you know, a lot of times I've found that speaking in tongues and prophesying is actually very connected. And so, you know, a lot of times when I speak in tongues, you know, I begin to, my spirit begins to stir. And a lot of times after I speak in tongues, you know, I start to get insight for prophecy, you know, or, or, or an interpretation of that. Um, but again, um, one's for more you and one's for others. And so that's why Paul says, you know, I want to, I, I want you all to speak in tongues, but then he says, but even more to prophesy you know, for the one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues. And so, you know, speaking in tongues will edify and bring you into the realm of the spirit. Um, and, and it's in that place, you know, you're able to re receive insight revelation. And um, I'm going to move forward down to our next verse here. And so, you know, now you're going to be asking the question, you know, how, like, do I have access to the thoughts of God and, um, and where does it say that? And so in first Corinthians two verse 10, it says this, and I'm going to go all the way to verse 12. And for all of you, I've been reading from the uh, ESV, the English standard version for everything I've read so far. Um, and so I'm going to still be reading out of that. Um, and so it says these things God has revealed to us through the spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Right? So it's saying the Spirit of God is the only one that can comprehend the thoughts of God. But wait, we're not done. It says, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And so, you know, if you think about this, Paul was saying this in the beginning of the church. And so Paul's only plan for establishing the church was hearing and then obeying. And then he was saying, because we have the spirit of God and not the spirit of this world, and the spirit of God can comprehend the thoughts of God, we actually get to comprehend the thoughts of God because we have the spirit of God and not the spirit of this world. And so it's so amazing that, you know, what this is saying is that we actually get to share headspace with God. We get to hear his thoughts, you know, on, on a person, on a place or, or on things. Um, and so it's super amazing that we, you know, you know, in the Old Testament, God spoke to prophets and prophets translated the message to people. But in the New Testament, God lives within us and God speaks to us. And so he's not just speaking to prophets who are translating the message to people anymore. This was before the veil was torn. It was like that. But now God actually lives within you. And it says that it says in here that the spirit of God lives within you. So that you know, the spirit of God can comprehend the thoughts of God. And so it's so amazing that, that now we actually, it, we, we're not living in the same reality as people were in the old Testament because God doesn't just live around us. He lives within us. And, and so that gives us opportunity to, to hear from him ourselves and not just to, to hear from other um, people or, 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 or get things from other prophets, if that makes sense. Um, and so I'm going to go over, I, I know a lot of questions are coming in. Um, I don't know if I'll get to answer all of these, but I hope in the rest of this teaching, it's going to answer a lot of them. Um, and then maybe at some point in the future, um, we'll be able to kind of address some Q&A on some other things. And so I want to talk about the ways that God speaks, right? So a lot of times you're going to ask, well, with prophecy, you know, there's lots of ways that God can speak, right? Like God can speak through a thought, right? And so a couple of different things. Number one, God can speak through visions. So visions can be, th this is something that you get while you're awake. And in an open vision, you would be seeing something visually. In a closed vision, you would be seeing something in your mind, um, in your mind's eye, like a picture in your mind's eye. 
So it's kind of like an, an impression or, or a picture of in your mind's eye of, you know, when you, here's a good example. When you imagine, like, think about imagining right now, right? So if, I, if I'm starting to imagine, I can think of that and then I can see it. And so a lot of times when prophesying, you know, God will speak in that place of our imagination, but it'll be kind of an unusual thought. Our image will just be stuck in our mind. And, and, and this is where, where we have a vision. Um, and that can either be, again, it can be something that you physically see or something you, an image that you see in your mind. Next, God can speak through dreams. Um, just like God spoke to Daniel and spoke to Nebuchadnezzar um, in dreams. Um, this is when God is speaking to us while we are asleep. And um, a, a lot of times to, with dreams, there's kind of cryptic meanings. You know, it says in Proverbs 25 too, that it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's a, the glory of kings to search it out. So a lot of times God has concealed personal things about you, personal things about places, personal things um, in his heart, in the matter of dreams. And, you know, there's signs and symbolism in dreams because in that place, you know, he's desiring for us to search. And the joy that God gets when he gives us dreams is that he gets to engage in intimacy with us while we search out, God, what the heck does that mean? Um, and so, you know, in my journey with dreams, it took me, um, I think I'd written down maybe hundreds of dreams for about four years. And I did not um, understand really anything um, for about four years. Then I took a class in a school of ministry and I started to learn some of these signs and symbols that God was speaking. And when I looked back at, at those seasons of my life, I began to see that all of those dreams had prophetic kind of significance to what God was doing. Um, and so um, next, God can speak through trances. Um, just like Peter with the sheet in Acts 10, you know, this is a dreamlike state when you are awake. I've never actually had one of these. Um, and so it's kind of probably a more rare way that God speaks, but it is in the Bible. And so I'm going to include it because it is in the Bible. God can also speak audibly um, or through a still small voice, um, such as like when Jesus was inaugurated by the father, you know, there's a voice that came out from heaven that said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And that was audible. Um, moving down, uh, God can speak through bringing up uh, impressions or these are more like inspired thoughts. And, and for me, I feel like this is kind of the way that God speaks the most to me is through inspired thought. And so it's through kind of God placing his finger on a, a thought that comes strong. Um, and so other than that, another way that God can speak is through memories. And so God can kind of bring old things to remembrance. And so in John 14, 26, you know, it says this, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will, he will teach you all things and bring to you your remembrance, all that I've said to you. And so God can bring things to remembrance. You know, um, one example that I, I've had, you know, when prophesying is, you know, uh, sometimes I would walk into a, a, like a church service and I would start, um, I, I would start getting like a thought of someone I hadn't thought about for like years ago, right? Someone I had no contact with. And like one time this person's name was Elise, Right. And, and I had found out, I had a thought of that person from my past, but there was somebody else in that church service that's name was Elise. And so God was bringing another person to remembrance to speak to a person that was there at that point, um, which was, you know, this is just a practical example. And so God may speak to you in, uh, in, in different ways, um, but this is a, a way that he's spoken to me before is kind of by bringing like something from the past to remembrance and making it presently relevant. Um, and so um, I'm going to move down from there. And so here's a little bit of practical application and kind of, you know, I think a lot of you are going to ask, well, how, how do I get to this place where I'm hearing God more? Cause I'm, I'm telling you about the ways that you can hear God. Right. And a, a lot of times I, I think number one um, is spending time in God's presence. God's presence will teach you God's voice. Reading God's word will teach you God's voice. 
when we read God's word, God's word is God's language. And so Pastor Mike at my church, he says this, you know, he says, he says, the more word in that goes in, the more prophecy will come out because the word of God reveals the language of the spirit. It reveals the nature of the father. And so how I'm going to be so deceived if I'm just trying to get impressions and I'm, my foundation is not the word of God. Like when the word of God is the foundation, that's the place, you know, where I'm going to actually learn. This is the way that the father speaks. This is how the father speaks. And so when I can recognize how God has spoken before in the word, I can realize how God is speaking now in the present. And so again, be in the word, consume the word, um, continue to eat the word of God, you know, because I, I believe if we are not, if we're trying to prophesy more than we are eating of the word of God, we will fall into deception. If we are not appetizing on the word of God to the capacity that we're prophesying, we will prophesy from the wrong place and we may be hearing voices that are not God at all. A great practice that I like to do in my own time with God that that's really going to help you is um, I spend time in silence with God. I wait on the Lord. And, and in that time, I don't pray. I'm not speaking. I'm just learning to listen. It's so important. I think a lot of us in prayer, we're praying and we're praying and we're speaking and we're telling God what we want to do but we aren't listening to what he wants to say. And so a great way to practice this, I want you guys to practice this. Um, you know, maybe your next time that you have with the Lord, spend 15 minutes in complete silence and just wait on the Lord and listen for him in silence. You know, th then you'll begin to learn the way that he speaks. And um, awesome, great feedback on, on, on the word and, and, uh, I encourage all of you too to read Psalms 119. So many promises about the word of God and the ways of God. Um, because, you know, God's word is his nature. It's his ways. Um, and, and so we can start to recognize that um, through what he's spoken before. And then another thing too, uh, once God starts to speak to you, I encourage you to write down what God says and track the results of what God's saying. Because you'll be able to kind of by trial and error, if you start to write down what God's speaking to you, you'll be able to see this one came to pass. This one didn't come to pass. God, yes, this one was your voice. God, no, this one wasn't your voice. And so there's so much grace in growing, you know, in this process and, and, and learning. Um, and so next, I, I want to I talk about kind of when we... Um, in, well, briefly before going to praying for others, I also want to talk about hindrances to hearing God. Um, Proverbs 4.23, it says, you know, keep your heart with all diligence for from it springs, you know, the, the, all the, all the things of life. And so, you know, we have to guard our eyes and our ears and our attention um, from to, to what we're consuming, what we're seeing, what we're hearing. A lot of times people are having a hard time hearing God because we live in a, you know, a world of so much information, but not a lot of revelation. And so, you know, because we're consuming so much social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all this stuff, you know, we get our hearts so cluttered with information that when we try to get silent in front of God, we're actually not silent. Because silence is not just being quiet externally, but it's being quiet internally. And you quiet yourself internally by being still before the Lord, but also by being um, conscious of how much you take in. You know, our, 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 we weren't meant to take in how much information is on social media all at once, which is why we have a generation so filled with anxiety, so filled with fear, so filled with depression. Like our bodies were not created to consume that much information yet we are consuming it yet we are being filled with so much of this information and you know it's in, in this place that we're, we're being so distracted and cluttered we're not able to hear God and so I just want to encourage you you know be selective with what you put in in the gates the eyes and the ears which are the gates of your heart 
you know, because when you really want a purifying in the prophetic, you know, a purifying in that, you're also going to have to purify what you see, what you hear. I'm not talking about being legalistic and not watching movies, and but but I am saying, you know, because I love my father and because I want to please him, I'm not going to watch that. Not because I, I'm obliged not to watch it, but because I want to hear my father's voice. And, and so I want to encourage all of you, you know, be, be, because you love your father, not because you have to obey, but because you want to obey. You know, God doesn't want this to be transactional, but relational. The whole thing about prophecy is it is completely relational. This is all about engaging in a relationship with your father and engaging in that with people. And so um, next, I want to talk about practical steps. I'm going to give you guys some super, super practical steps um, for you know, I, I think a lot of people have taught on prophecy, but not a lot of people share things that are like super practical, like how can I start today? And so I, I want to share with you guys stuff that's like very much practical in ways that you can just start like today and right now. And so a quick example, let's say I am going to pray for this person, right? Like, let's say I'm going to pray for Abigail um, and if I'm going to pray for Abigail, um, some things that I will engage with the Lord is number one, I love to ask God questions when I'm engaging in, you know, with this person. So usually I'll, I'll look at the person and I'll, I'll just think of that person and then I'll start to engage the Lord with questions. So a couple of things will be like, God, what is your favorite thing about this person? What do you love um, about this person? And I might get a picture or an image or, or something of like, oh my gosh, this person, I feel like this person loves to be outdoors. And then I might say, you know, talk to this person and be like, hey, do you love to be outdoors? Yes. Awesome. Um, something else I might ask the Lord is, you know, what did, what gifts and talents did you place inside of this person before they were born in their mother's womb? What was your original design for this person? These are two questions I think I almost always ask the Lord when I'm prophesying over someone because these are, I think prophesying is, it's meant to, it's meant to pull out the original design of the way that like God created that person because God has a design, you know, before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you like it says in Jeremiah one, four to five, and he set you apart. So he was intimate with you before you were born. He knew you and knew the gifts and talents that he put inside of you, knew the destiny that he had set out for you. He had written all of your days in a book before you were formed in your mother's womb. And so I like to ask the questions to the Lord that address, well, what was that? And, you know, the Lord loves to, to answer in that place. Um, secondly, let's say I'm not getting any impression. I'm not getting anything at all. Well, the good part is in Romans, you know, it talks about, it, it talks about prophesying according to your level of faith. And so even if I'm not getting any impression, any vision, any thought, I typically will start prophesying the word of God over them. Why? Because the word of God is the language of God. And so here's a good example. You know, I can say over anybody here, God, I thank you that you will never leave them or forsake them. God, I think that even when they were faithless, that you were faithful. God, I thank you you know, that, that your love for them is everlasting. I thank you that you've casted away their sins from the east is to the west. I'm prophesying the word. And a lot of times what happens is when I start to prophesy God's written word into the current situation, God actually gives prophetic significance to his word. And then at the same time, a lot of times I'll start to receive impressions, revelation, wisdom, insight um, after prophesying the word. So a, a lot of times, you know, the word is a good place um, to start. It's a good place to, um, if you don't have anything else, start with what you know God is from the word and prophesy that um, over them. And um, a, another thing that you can do is, um, you know, I, I think in, in the process of prophecy, you're going to have to learn um, how to receive, interpret, and then apply. And so um, it, it really depends on kind of what setting that you're in. 
you know, because I can receive something from God. And let's say I, I see like crazy visions of horses and, you know, I, I might, if I'm saying that to someone that doesn't know the Lord and I'm in a business environment, I might translate that as, okay, horses represent endurance and strength. Um, and, you know, something in the sky, God's taking them higher. And so I might say to this person, instead of saying, I saw a vision with horses and, you know, in the sky, I might say, I think God's giving you strength and endurance in this season and, and God's taking you higher, if that makes sense. And so this is how I receive revelation. I interpret, and then I use emotional intelligence to apply to whatever situation atmosphere. And, you know, another thing I would say too is I never... I don't prophesy, you know, saying the Lord says this or the Lord says that because it, it doesn't leave that person a place to test the scripture or to test the prophecy. When I say the Lord says this, the Lord says that, um, you know, it, it, there's a, a uh, there's, there's a connotation that, that it, that person's not able to judge. Um, and, and we, we really want to be able to, um, to, to, to judge or give people the space to be able to test the prophecy. Um, and so again, um, a lot of times if I'm not sure, let's say I'm getting a word of knowledge, um, which, you know, this is, there's a difference between a prophecy, a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. And so a prophecy, you know, tells the future, a word of knowledge tells either the present or the past. It's a fact. It's either right or wrong. And a word of wisdom gives someone instruction for what they are to do today. And these are all things, um, and I think it's in 1 Corinthians 12, um, they're on a list. Um, but, you know, when God is speaking a word of knowledge, and I'm not sure, let's say I'm not sure if it's God or not, right? I get see an image of two sons. Instead of saying, like, you have two sons, I might say, do you have two sons? And if they don't, I'll say, Hey, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to hear God and I'm just learning. Um, will you give me another chance to, to pray over you? Um, but, but I think a non-invasive way of practicing prophecy is by asking questions. Did you skateboard when you were young? Did you this when you were young? Someone asked, what was a word of knowledge again? A word of knowledge is an impression for a um, a past, a, a fact of someone's past or their present. It doesn't relate to their future, um, and, and and so that's some something that um, that's something that that God will speak as a fact, and, and that's either going to be right or wrong. It's black and white. There's no kind of room for interpretation with that. And so a lot of times with words of knowledge, I'll ask, you know, is there someone you know, like this, or is there someone like that, um, which gives the room for, you know, potential for that person to either respond. Um, and then, um, I would also say this, when you are practicing, um, practice in community, practice around others, um, and get around other people, find other people who are hungry for this and engage in it together. And you can even just practice by praying over each other. Um, but, I think it also helps too to pray for people that you don't know a lot about, um, be, because in that place um, you can. I think you'll you'll you you won't go from what you know of that person, um, and so and then go out and take risks. You know, I would say this: Bill Johnson, Pastor Bill Johnson, says this. You know, be intimate with God in public, in private, and take risks in public. And so be intimate with God and then take risks when you're in the, when you're in the uh, public place. Um, and then engage with other people, be in community with others, um, because, you know, it, it even talks about in First Corinthians, you know, letting two or three judge a prophecy. And so having that accountability is just a safe place. Um, and, and you're not condemned if you get it wrong. There's totally room to grow and room to learn. Um, but, but having that accountability is going to help you to realize what's God's voice and what's not and being able to bounce that off of people. Um, and so, okay, so moving forward, you know, I, I'm going to talk next about um, when receiving a word. 
Um, I, you know, I think a lot of people have talked a lot about how you prophesy, but I also want to talk about how you receive a word, um, because a, a lot of unhealthy stuff can happen, um, in the prophetic. And I've seen unhealthy prophetic before, um, which is why I think a lot of churches have decided because one unhealthy thing happened, let's throw the whole thing out. But the enemy is going to counterfeit what's really powerful. Like, is he, is he going to counterfeit a penny or a hundred dollar bill? Of course, the hundred dollar bill and the prophetic and the prophetic gifting is so powerful. Just like I said earlier, how it shifted my life. It's so powerful. And the enemy's so afraid that he wants to counterfeit this. And God wants all his children to be able to move in this. But I, I want to talk about, um, want to talk about how you receive a word. Number one, it says this. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 19 to 21, it says, Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything and hold fast to what is good. And so when you receive a prophecy, you want to test it. A lot of times when I get a prophecy, I don't go, oh my, sometimes I know it's the Lord, but other times I put it on the shelf and uh, and and I allow I allow its fulfillment to test it. I allow the process to test it. And, and here's the thing. If you want a prophetic word, you are asking God for warfare because prophetic words produce the process of the Lord. Because a prophetic word is saying it's pulling you up to who God's always created you to be and pulling you out of where you're at now, which means it starts a process for you to become more Christ-like. It starts a process for you to, to engage with all of the parts of you that are not Christ-like. And so expect warfare. When you get a really good prophecy, that may be that you might have some things that you need to deal with. You know, if you're prophesied about a marriage and you have stuff that you're dealing with in your singleness, that prophecy might lead you to have to engage in that process of purifying. Why? Because God wants you to be able to steward the promise of the prophecy. But there is a process to it. And so engage in process because process is beautiful. Process is, a, is amazing. And it's actually in the waiting. It's in the process that God produces what's needed for the prophetic fulfillment of the promise that he's speaking. And so God wants us um, to engage, yes, to, to receive prophetic words. But also a lot of times we don't walk those things out because the process gets hard. I want to say these things to you that you should, in this moment, I know it's been a hard year, but stay in the fight persevere because in that place, God's building character, God's building wisdom, God's building his nature. And in this place, you know, I believe that God's putting within you what's needed for him to fulfill the things that he's spoken to you. And so I want to encourage those of you that, that are going through a difficult time today to stay in the race, to stay in the fight, to stay on the wheel. And, and as long as you stay in the race, that, that God's going to bring it to pass. As long as you, you, you stay in that race and you keep your heart towards him, He's going to bring it to pass. And as long as you stay intimate with him. And so um, a couple of things, you know, when I receive a perfect word, a couple of things I do. Number one, if possible, record it. Um, because a lot of times you won't catch things listening to it the first time. Number two, listen carefully. Um, it's important to listen very carefully because a lot of times there are little details that God is speaking, you know, and a lot of times it's even like two small words that are very important. Number three, if you don't fully understand what someone is saying, it's totally okay to ask them questions. Like, did you see it like this? Or did you see it like that? When you say this, what do you mean by that? Um, are you, does this refer to my process in this? And so ask questions to the person that's prophesying over you. If you don't fully understand another thing too, is to give honest feedback. Um, you, it's important to give that person feedback because you want to help that person to grow in their prophetic gifting too. And, um, by giving them feedback, you can help them to realize what things came from the heart of God. When things did not come from the heart of God. Um, and, and this is going to help that person, um, to, to be able to, to be able to, to, to know if it was, you know, God's heart for them or not. Um, and then I would also say, you know, if it's something that has a timeline, um, also follow up and bring confirmation if it comes to pass. 
And even if it doesn't come to pass, if someone said like, you're going to get a new church building in six months and, and it didn't happen, I would also follow up and, and tell that person that it did not happen um, because that's you stewarding them and that's you helping them to grow in their gift. Um, and, and so um, that's totally, um, that's totally helpful um, to gi give people feedback. And so these are, I've kind of went over a couple of different things to give you a very basic foundation for prophesying. But the heart of it is this, God wants to speak to all of you and God wants to speak through you. And, and he, no matter where you're at, whether you're in a business, whether you are a teacher, um, God is going to, uh, God wants to speak through you into that realm that you're in to, to bring the kingdom to shape culture. And, you know, I think a lot of times the, we have difficulty in translating what we experience in a church environment into a secular environment. And when the veil is lifted off of what we experience in the church into a practical environment, um, that's when God's going to really reveal, you know, God's going to really release his voice when we can translate that expression into a practical environment. And so, um, you know, in my last job, um, quick testimony, um, you know, things that, that, that I did was, um, you know, I would ask just people would ask me, you know, I was an admissions counselor and I was helping people to realize like what things that they needed to, uh, that, that they needed to, to realize, um, for, you know, their time in college. And a lot of times when I had an impression, I might ask them like, Hey, have you done something with computers or have you done something with, um, design before? And maybe they were doing business and I'd be like, Hey, maybe you want to consider like digital design, you know, when they would respond like, Oh my gosh, I've done this all my life. Um, and so this is kind of a practical way, um, that you can practice. And yeah, I just, yeah, just like Cayenne, Cayenne just said, feel free to practice engaging prophecy right now in the chat. Um, ask God for a prophetic word for someone else. Um, I, I just want to, I, I want to encourage you guys to do that. If you see others on, on the chat or just pick out a name on the chat and just start asking the Lord that those questions, Lord, what do you love about this person? Lord, what are the gifts and talents that you've placed in this person before they were formed in their mother's womb? And so I just want to encourage you to, to do that. Um, and if you receive a prophecy from someone, I, I just want to encourage you to return it to somebody else and to just, in a sense, pay it forward. Um, and so let's make this a little prophecy chat room. Um, and so um, I, I just want to, uh, I'm going to pray over this um, time of, of activation. And so Holy Spirit, we just pray right now, Lord, over each and every person over the 200 people that are watching on this chat. And Lord, we just pray that you would release the spirit of prophecy. And God, we, we just thank you that you would right now, that you would surprise those ones um, that, that, are, that are on this chat and that you would speak to them. And especially if it's their first time, Lord God, I just pray that you would speak to them, that you would help them, that you would give them insight um, in Jesus' name. Amen. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and pray over some of you. I'm also going to just release a couple of different words of knowledge um, that I believe that the Lord's speaking. Um, so if it is you, um, please respond in the chat or else I don't know if if it's you or not. Um, and so I'm going to just kind of go over a couple of things I'm kind of seeing in my mind's eye. Um, and then, um, I might pray over a couple of you as the Holy spirit leads as well, but I want to encourage you. This isn't about me praying over you, but this is about you being activated to do this over others. So I pray that this would be for, for that you would catch something and translate this to others because God wants to release his heart through you. Um, and I, I just want to demonstrate this. But I, I believe that God wants to speak this through you. And so, um, okay, so uh, I feel like um, I'm getting an impression of a person. Um, and, and let me know. I feel like there's someone here. You are a school teacher and you work at a school. 
and um, I, your school has shut down or you're not physically in person now um, because of kind of the COVID and everything. And you've been having difficulty with kind of the platform online and, and things like that. Um, and I just feel like the Lord wants to give you wisdom. And I, I feel like the Lord's going to bless you through this. And I feel like there's a blessing for your family through this. Um, and so I don't know, if, is there anyone here, you're, you're a teacher whose school has been shut down and you're doing your school stuff online. If that's you, um, just feel free to respond in the chat. But I'm going to just go ahead and move on to a couple of other things. Um, I also, um, I saw an impression of a person um, named, uh, I, I felt like a person impression of a person named uh, Jessica. And you have a sister. And um, I feel like you and your sister are going through like a, uh, a difficult time in your relationship right now. And I just feel like the Lord is going to, uh, I, I feel like the, the Lord is going to bring reconciliation um, in this season and work out misunderstandings for you. Um, and so if there's a Jessica on this chat and that's you, and if you don't have a sister, you don't have to respond. Um, it, 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 it's either, it's either completely yes, or it's completely not. Um, but, but I just feel like God's bringing peace and, and through this relationship and how God brings peace, I feel like he's going to bring peace throughout your whole family. Um, and so this is, I feel like the reconciliation of this relationship is going to be a, um, oh, okay. We had a Jessica answer. It, it's going to be like a prophetic sign for your whole family. Um, so Lord, we just thank you for Jessica. God, thank you for her heart. And thank you for her life. And thank you that you love her and that you have great plans for her family, Lord, in this season. And so, Lord, we just bless um, your daughter and we just thank you for her heart. We thank you for her life. We thank you for your touch upon her. And Lord, we just bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. So I'm getting a couple of other things. Um I have, uh, I'm getting an impression of someone you are about to, um, you are moving out of one place and you're moving into another place. I feel like you're about to make a big change and, and right now you're, you're holding on to, I feel like this is a physical location change too. I'm not talking spiritually, but I feel like there's a person that's physically going to move out of one place to the other. And you're having a hard time letting go of what was in the last season. And I feel like the Lord's saying that like, he's going to, he's giving you the faith to, to take this step. And I just feel like you're supposed to, 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 to move. And I, I feel like you're supposed to leave behind that. God's closing a door and opening another door in this season. Um, it, but I feel like there's going to be a physical location change. Um, if that's you, um, let me know if that's you. Um, that, that you're moving. Um, and, and, and I just feel like, um, God's going to give you grace to shut that door, um, in this, in this last season. And because I feel like you're struggling of, of like, um, looking back at the past and looking back at, at, at what's happened before and not being able to move forward. And I just feel like the Lord is the, the, the Lord saying, you know, like I've ordained this step. This is your moment and, and, and I, I feel like the, the Lord's saying, yes, you have grace to move. And I want to bless all of you that just moved. This word was for um, someone that's going to move, but, but I'm going to bless. Um, I also want to bless those of you that just moved as well um, in, in your moves, because I, I believe in this moment, what God is saying over a lot of you is that there are big um, strategic moves that are being made. Um, and God is positioning his people. And, uh, um, yeah. Wow. And, uh, I'm also, um, I feel like, is there someone here? Um, you live in Portland, Oregon. Um, and you are, is there someone here from Portland, Oregon? And you are a, you're a female and I feel like the Lord. Yeah. I just so feel the Lord's heart for you. And I, I feel like the Lord wants to to blow away the uh, di dis the discouragement um, of this season. And again, if you are here, um, I want to encourage you to just respond. Um, 
But but I just feel like that the Lord is he's shaking off the discouragements from this season. I feel like you had something happen in a relationship that was disappointing within the last three months. Um, and I just feel like God is, um, I feel like God is wanting to, to encourage you with his love. I feel like God is wanting to encourage you that like there are better days ahead and, and you feel like you haven't been able to see um, in this season and you feel like it's like not being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I just feel like the Lord's going to show you like, yes, I am the light and look at me. Um, and I, I just feel like that the, the Lord is the Lord. So the Lord's so proud of you for your heart towards him um, in this. And so Lord, we just bless this person and we pray all these things in Jesus name. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Um, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Um, um, so is there someone, um, there's someone here from, uh, from Poland. Is there someone here from Poland? Um, I know that's like really far away and it's probably not likely, but, um, is there someone here from Poland? All right. Well, if there is someone, um, I'm getting that state. I'm also, um, getting something. Um, okay. We have a mysterious flower. So I don't know your name because you said you're a mysterious flower. Um, I also have another person from, um, Poland, Agata. Um, and so I guess I'll just, uh, I'm going to just pray for, um, okay. And then another person, I don't know if you both are the same person. Are you both the same person? There's one with the first name and one with the, um, okay. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So, so Lord, we just, uh, we just bless your daughter Agata and, and Lord, thank you that Poland is on your heart. Lord, we just thank you for her heart. We thank you for her life. Um, yeah, it's so amazing, Agata. I, I feel like, you know, the, the Lord's put so much within you. Um, and I, I feel like the Lord's placed so many kind of specific gifts and talents. Um, and I feel like you are a light for your family. I see you as being, I, I saw a, a, a sunflower and I saw like this sun and I just feel like God's, sh God's sun shines upon you. Um, and and I, I feel like you, God's going to, you, you are, God's raising you up as a voice, not just for your people, but God's raising you up as a voice, even in the, I feel like you're going to even speak into the realms of within uh, the media and like even entertainment uh, mountains um, that God's going to give you a voice and God's raised you up, you know, for such a time as this. And God's so proud of the way that you've, you know, you, you've, the way that you've walked through um, different, I feel like in the last three years, there's kind of been multiple situations that you walk through relationally. Um, and God's so proud that you like stuck with him, that you, that you said yes to him, even when it was hard for you. I feel like there's yeah, I feel like there's two different times in the last three years that like you had to say no to something that was very, very difficult to say no to. I feel like the Lord's so proud of you um, for the way that you that that you've turned away from that. Um and and I, I just feel like God's gonna raise you up as as a image, as a sign, um, as a sign bearer. I don't know what this means, but I, I even see you um I see you writing. And I see you like writing stories and blogs and testimonies and, and you're going to travel. Wow. I see travel for you. Um, I, I feel like God's going to take you to many different nations. Um, and even all over Germany, I see you going all over Germany and all over the nations. Um, and so Lord, we just thank you for that. And, uh, and Lord, we just bless your daughter Agata and, and we just thank you for your love for her. Thank you that you're sending her, Lord. You're raising her up as a voice, Lord, as a voice to the nations. And Lord, we just thank you that you would keep her, Lord, in the palm of your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, 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 wow. I see so many amazing prophetic words that you guys are speaking over each other. This so encourages my heart. Oh, man, that's so awesome. 
thank you guys for the way that you guys are stepping out and that you guys are, are taking risks um, and, and doing this. This is so cool. You know, I see favor. You said, you know, you saw someone in a wedding dress and, you know, God's restoring them. So awesome. And, and I see another person um, and then lots of confirmations here. And so that's so awesome. That so encourages me. Um, and so um, I know it's been about an hour here. So I just want to thank all of you for um, having me on today. I, I pray that you guys, I, I hope you guys received something from this. I know there was a lot of questions and a lot of things that I um, I didn't get to uh, address. Um, but, you know, and I thank God for, for Kyle and Cayenne for the time that, that I got to, um, that, that I got to, to address and, and speak to you guys about prophecy. Um, I just love how, how hungry you guys are. And, uh, and, uh, and so thank you so much for, for having me on. And so, uh, last thing, I, I think I'm going to pray for a, uh, Naomi here, um, who asked for prayer. And so, uh, Naomi glory, what a prophetic name. Yeah. So Naomi glory. Um, yeah, Lord, thank you for your daughter, Naomi glory. Yeah. You know, you have a voice to sing and, um, and I just feel like the Lord is, I feel like the, the Lord's so proud of you in this season, Naomi glory, and that, that his glory is going to shine upon you in this season. Like, I feel like there's been an attack even against your name, but like the fact that you're named that is because you were set apart for the glory of God. You were set apart for the purposes of God. You were set apart in the palm of his hand. And I feel like there's coming a time soon that I just see you dancing again. And I see you singing again. And I see God, I see you worship. You, you're you a worshiper. God's put, I just see um, such a, a spirit of worship inside of you, such an in intensity and tenacity that you have. Um, and, and I feel like people have tried to shut you down by saying like, you know, you're being too loud or too much or this or that. And I just feel like God's saying, no, I've placed a worshiper inside of you and you're going to worship in this season. You're, you're going to praise in this season. You're going to lift your voice in this season. I feel like the Lord's that the Lord's saying, you know what? I know people have tried to silence you, but, but there's going to be a releasing of the roar of the lion in your voice in this season. And so Lord, we pray this over your daughter, Naomi, Lord, that, that she is going to roar in this season, God, that you are, you are releasing her voice to roar like fire. And so Lord, we just thank you for that. And Lord, we just release that voice over her in Jesus name. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. Naomi, hope that blesses you and, and hope that's on. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, but the Lord loves you so much and, uh, and the Lord wants to speak to you. And so, amen. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, I had another person, I know a lot of you are asking for prayer. And so if I don't get to you, I pray that someone else on the chat does pray for you. Um, and so I'm going to just pray for one or two last people, and then I'm going to get going. That way you guys can um, go off and have the rest of your days. Um, but I have a, uh, I had a person, uh, Vanessa here that said, pray, can you pray for me? I lost my uncle yesterday. And so, uh, so yeah, so Lord, we lift up your daughter, um, Vanessa. God, thank you for her heart. Thank you for her life. Um, and Lord, we just thank you for, for what you call Vanessa. Lord, thank you in this season, Lord. Um, and it was almost like, I feel like this was like the, what happened to you was almost like, I, I'm hearing this, it was like kind of like the third blow. Like there was kind of two, maybe two other things that like preceded it and, and this thing kind of hit. But, but I feel like for the things that the enemies tried to, to do in your life in this season, I feel like God is going to strike back with three other blows into your future. That's going to create a consequence of like God's blessing um, as you walk through this season in your future. And I just feel like God's so proud of you um, that you've been one. Yeah, I feel like you've been one. You've had questions in this season, but I feel like God's saying to you that that like that you can trust him. Um, and, and I don't know if you have, um, 
I'm not sure if you have like two sisters, um, but but I, I feel like I, I just see that your trust in this season is going to give other people strength. And I feel like God's promising you, you know, just like he promises in Romans that he works all things for good that for those that love him and that are called according to his purpose. I feel like God's promised to you in this is that this situation with your uncle, like that God's going to make it good. I, and I, I don't know how he will, but I just, I feel like he wants to give you that promise. And I also feel like the Lord, I see him taking you outdoors. I don't know if you like doing hiking, um, but I saw you going outdoors to a natural place and just like getting air from like all the stuff going on. And so I feel like the Lord's going to take you out of your kind of normal rhythm of what you're doing out to a natural place to speak to you. And so, Lord, we just bless um, your daughter, Vanessa, and we just thank you, Lord. Um, we just thank you, Lord, for her. Lord, we just bless her, and we thank you for touching her. We thank you for your plans for her. We thank you for taking her to a place of, of rest with you, and we just bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. So last person I'm going to pray for, um, is, uh, uh, Kathy DeWilt, I think. Um, and, uh, as soon as I saw your name, Kathy, I just felt like the Lord's going to prosper a lot of people through you. I feel like there's something in you that is going to be like maybe entrepreneurial or business. Um, but I just feel like the Lord's, I saw the Lord's blessing in prosperity and I'm not trying to promote the prosperity gospel. I'm just telling you what I saw. Um, but I, I, I saw God, like, you know, it says that, that he who refreshes others will be refreshed, um, themselves. And I just feel like God's going to refresh others through your generosity. Yeah. God's put such a generosity inside of you, Kathy. Um, and even in the way that you care for others and in the way that you treat many people that are not your family, like family, I am getting this. Um, you you treat a lot of people that are not your family like family. I don't know if you, um, I don't know if you maybe help out with like young boys or girls or, or do something with orphans or something like, I just feel like there's, you help people, um, that are not family feel like that, um, or maybe fatherless and motherless, but, but I just feel like God's pouring all kinds of kind of generosity through you. The Lord's so proud of you and in, in your heart. And, and I feel like as you pour out to others, God's always going to pour out more to you. Um, and so I just see the Lord and just, I saw him pouring like a, a uh, just a refreshing uh, fountain of, of just, a, a, just a stream of his presence over you. Um, and I feel like he's refreshing you in this season from what's tried to bring you. Last three months, I feel like there's been things that have tried to bring discouragement and like weariness. I feel like God's shaking that off right now in this moment. He's shaking off any uh, weariness. He's shaking off any tiredness. Um, and, and I feel like he's releasing um, just his yoke, which is easy, his burden that's light. Um, and so, Lord, we just bless your daughter, uh, Kathy. We thank you for her life. Um, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, awesome. It's been awesome to be with you guys this afternoon. Um, I know there's a lot of other prayer requests, so I, I encourage you guys. I can't pray for everybody, but you guys can pray for each other. And I'm no one special. I'm just a regular Christian that hears from God like everybody else, just like you are. Um, this is for everybody. It's not for special people. I don't have some special gift that you don't have. You can do what I do. Um, and so I pray that you would um, receive from this teaching. And I'm going to just, to close this out, I just want to pray a prayer of impartation. So for those of you that are still watching, I want you to just open up your hands before your screen in, in a way of receiving. And, and I'm going to pray a prayer of impartation. I believe that God's going to, is going to impart something to you right now. And so Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just pray that you would release the spirit of prophecy over all of those that are watching, over those that will watch on the live stream later, over those that will watch on the rebroadcast. God, I thank you, Lord, that you would show them that you speak to them. And so, Lord, I pray that you would speak to them in whatever way that you desire to speak to them. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would bless 
that you to bless each and every person with more of your presence, with more of your power. And Lord, that, that, that they would hear your voice. And so Lord, we just thank you. And Lord, we just release this impartation right now. And we pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, hey, God bless all of you. I want to again thank Kyle and Kyan for allowing me to share on their platform and allowing me to share with their friends. And I want to thank all of you for logging on and for staying so long with me and for hearing me teach. Um, and I just want to encourage all of you. This is for all of you. It's not for special people. Um, anyone can prophesy. You know, if, if you know Jesus and have Holy Spirit in you, you can prophesy. And so go for it. We bless you to, to, to go for it and to be encouraged in this season because God has amazing things and he has a hope and a future for all of you and for the nations that you live in. So God bless you. Again, thank you so much for allowing me to speak with you today. I'm so honored and so grateful that you guys um, came and watched and, and heard me um, teach today. So thank you so much. Um, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.